Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking about the 11 tips for window cleaners. So if you're in the business, thinking about getting the business, or you just like to watch window cleaning videos, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. How's it going? If it's your first time here, have a look around. I've done this podcast now every single week for, gosh, almost six years. There's well over 300 episodes, all 30 minutes long, and I have not missed a week, knock on wood. So go back, watch, and binge on everything. If it's not your first time here, and you are one of the cool kids, you've watched the episodes, you've left me comments, you've thumbsed up the video, of course, on YouTube, but more importantly, you've purchased your supplies through me. Yes, this is a shameless plug. (laughs) And it works, by the way. Uh, Yes, uh, then it's because of you that I get to live the life of hair gel and name brand band-aids. So thank you so much for that. And if you want to support me or give me a high five or just be as absolutely amazing as you can be, let me put your orders in. If you're on windowcleaner.com, all you have to do is just click save this cart and then text me at 862-312-2026. Just let me know, hey, Jersey, everything's in my cart. Put it through. Or if you didn't put it in a cart, I can do that too. Jersey, I just need X, Y, Z. I could take it from there. It's super easy, costs you nothing extra, and I get credit for the sale. So it's like the most awesome high five ever. So if you haven't yet, please let me be a rep. That is all I want to do in life is be your rep. And if you haven't yet, go to awcmag.com and get a subscription to the American Window Cleaner Magazine. It's the longest running magazine for window cleaners in the entire world. Not many to choose from, but it's been around since 1986. It's amazing. It's actually a phenomenal, phenomenal magazine. There's amazing pictures. It's cool to just nerd out and uh, uh, surround ourselves in the industry that we love. So go to awcmag.com, get the subscription. You're gonna get a magazine every single month, full color, articles, issue. Uh, every issue's got articles and pictures and posters and just cool stuff. You're gonna better your knowledge and of course you're gonna get a sticker sheet every single month that you can use for whatever. It's all stickers uh, based on window cleaning. So be a nerd and get American Window Cleaner Magazine. But anyway, so today we are actually talking all about the 11 tips for window cleaners. Now, this is just tips that I want to throw out there, put a bunch of stuff out. This is the season for growth. This is the season for growth. This is absolutely, everybody's ramping up. I'm recording this. It's actually April. Uh, Spring seems to be a little behind as far as like weather goes and stuff. But man, we are just right there on the cusp. Uh, For me, you guys know too that I do a bunch of... um, personal uh, coaching, like one-on-one stuff. And that is absolutely blowing up. The guys that have prepped through the winter are literally ready with everything. Um, So it's phenomenal. It's gonna be a a huge, huge year. But here's 11 tips that are gonna help you be a better window cleaner, hopefully, and get you to be a better business owner. And the first one is going to be focus on repeat customers. A lot of people kind of just lose sight of the repeat customers. They get done with that person and they're like, all right, where's the next one? Let's do the next one. Let's get the next one. That's great, but you need to focus on the repeat person. Now, the repeat window cleaning customer is where the dentist close comes in. I won't talk about that. I've talked about it a thousand times, right? It's where email blasts and postcards and all of those things that you send to the existing customers, that is where that focus is. It's so much easier to get somebody who already loves you to use your services again. It's getting repeat customers. That's what builds a business, not just what pays the bills, right? If you're trying to build an empire, get repeat work and focus on the repeat people. Don't forget about the repeat people. Uh, I have almost daily, by the way, as a side note, Uh, almost daily, somebody texts me. By the way, people just text me and be like, yo, what's up? Great show, terrible show, use less hair gel. I don't know what it is, but they just text me all the time. And uh, uh, every week, every week I have people that say, dude, I just started using the dentist clothes and it works phenomenal. And those guys are gonna just ramp up their business real quick on the dentist clothes. All that means is just like the dentist, when you go there, 
you get your next appointment before you leave. That's the same thing. Hey, did you want to get your next window cleaning uh, done on uh, three months from now? Or did you want to wait six months? You get it in the books and booked and then you have reoccurring work automatically set. So get reoccurring work, get that repeat client, focus on the existing. You still got to focus on getting new stuff, of course, but to really strengthen a company, focus on that repeat. Uh, the next thing that uh, is on the 11 tips for window cleaners is staying relevant. This is a tough one because people sometimes think that I am annoying customers by sending them stuff, by emailing them, by uh, mailing them stuff, by sending stuff. I don't want to annoy somebody. You're not. No one cares about you. No one cares about you. You know how many ads are going on? They say you see over 10,000 ads a day, right? McDonald's advertises in every single thing. Magazines, newspapers, billboards, television. They do um, radio. And it's not because people don't know who they are. It's just to stay relevant. Stay at the front of your brain. That's where window clings come into play. Your name and logo is always there. That's where postcards come into play. Your name, your logos, your colors, your themes. That's where email blasts come into play. All of that stuff that you're staying relevant with continues to keep people knowing who you are and keeps you in the front of their brain because when their brain turns on that it's time for window cleaning, you got to be the first and only person to come to mind, right? Stay relevant no matter what you do, stay relevant. Uh, if you go into obscurity, then you will be forgotten, I'm telling you right now. Uh, the next thing is collecting payment before you leave. This tip is amazing because it will cut down A, huge on all the work you're doing after trying to collect payment, but it just keeps it so that when we're done, we're done. I'm not taking any more of my time or spending any of my office staff's time to go and track down payments. It's awful. You've already done the work. You've already booked the jobs. And now you got to call again a couple weeks later like, hey, we still owe the... At the end of the job, just go and ask. All right, so at the beginning of the job, I always tell people, when we're done, we'll take all this back and I'll collect payment. And at the end, oh, great, how's everything look? Looks great. Okay, cool. All I need back from you is a satisfaction form, uh, any notes you have, and we'll collect payment. Okay, I'm paying with a check. I'm paying with a card. I can take that from you now. I pull it up and do it right then and there. Collect at the end of the service. Do not bill. There is no benefit to billing. You did not help your customer by sending them a bill. You did not help the customer in any way by doing that. All you do is just delay the process. And now they're paying for a service weeks after they've had the service where right now, if you get them to pay for the service right now, they're looking around, this is so amazing. I'm totally happy to pay for this right now. Collect payment before you leave. Put it into your um, repertoire, if you will. Put it into how you do business every single time, and I promise you it will make your world easier. Another thing is uh, the high-tech um, gear that you have. Don't hesitate getting better equipment. Now, I'm going to Put this out there that I am absolutely a sales rep for windowcleaner.com. Uh, you know that most of you use me. There's some of you who don't use me, by the way. Um, but I do want you to use me for your window cleaning supplies. Uh, but, so take this with a grain of salt, but I'm a huge, huge, huge proponent of having the newest and best equipment. And I know some of you are doing DIY stuff, and that's totally cool. In my opinion, I don't like it. I don't like showing up to a job with something that doesn't look absolutely high tech, perfect, clean, crisp, amazing, right? When you have that equipment, we're talking screen cleaners and water fed, of course, and and uh, new poles and new gear and, and your belts and all your tools are just crisp and clean and new and good and look advanced. That all puts through to your value more than anything else. I know some of you, um, by the way, I'm not picking on any of you for this particular part, but some of you are still using Home Depot and Lowe's stuff, right? It's that one color blue, it's a homeowner line. They don't sell professional stuff there. Um, and you're using that still because you didn't, just haven't bought in a professional squeegee. It works, right? The problem is, is if you show up to a job and you pull out a Lowe's bucket and you have a blue scrubber and a blue squeegee 
and you have some paper towel or whatever you're using and people go, well, man, this guy, I'm, he's got all the stuff I could get. There's no value. All it does then is it diminishes everything and just goes to labor. Well, I guess I don't have to do it. You're losing so much value. But if I show up and all of my guys look the exact same, same shirts, they got the same belt, the same buckets, the same equipment, advanced equipment. They pull out a water fit system that's super shiny and the stickers are on point. And everything is crisp. The lines are perfect. I pull out a carbon fiber pole. People are like, what is this? This is amazing. I pull out a screen cleaner. They've never even seen that. Now it's not just this guy's doing some labor, but it's this guy's doing something I can't do. By the way, my phone is ringing in my pocket. Right? So adding your equipment and tech adds value to your company. So don't hesitate to reinvest in yourself. Not only that, it makes your just job easier. It just makes things easier, right? So always, always, always reinvest if you can, especially on gear. I uh, really like gear, by the way. Um, by the way, uh, while you're watching this, if you are uh, watching this the week of uh, April 7th, this will come. Uh, there's actually a deal for a free poll on Waterfit. If you're looking for deals in general, ask me and I can tell you what our specials are if we got anything going on. So anyway, um, but yeah, have great tech show your value, right? Uh, the next thing on the list for me is being clean. Now, some of you say, hey, I don't have a lot of money to reinvest, right? I'm new. Um, it's not a growth season for me. I'm not looking to reinvest a ton. If you wash your trucks, if you vacuum the inside and it's not cluttered, if your shirt is clean with no stains, if you do your hair and you shave, those things are free. Those are free. You can look amazing without spending money. Now, if you are looking to spend money, right? You got a big company, you don't have the time for that. Get a detailer in there, right? Keep the trucks clean. Make it the crew's job to keep the trucks clean. Those things, just like new shirts, we have a whole rack of every size and every type of shirt, sweatshirts. Uh, we run coats, hats. Uh, we have the beanies, uh, polos for estimates. We have all of those things lined up. I have had all of those shirts ready because if anybody got a stain or anything, get a new shirt. It costs you 20 bucks and you don't look like a pig. Don't use stretched out clothes. Don't use just a regular t-shirt. Make sure it's logo lettered. It takes a little bit of effort to get that to look like a million bucks. If you're clean, that's free. If your image is clean, that is what people like. That is the, 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 the luxury service that we're all providing. So be clean and spend a bunch of time trying to be better. Now I'm gonna tell you this also. When it comes to apparel, image, personal image, this comes back to your gear. Your gear needs to be on point, right? You can't look like you're carrying, you know, garbage stuff. And I have an interesting story. This is an old timer. He's no longer in business. He ended up, this is in a city I was in. He ended up, um, he underbid these city jobs every year and he got them. And that was one of his main things, but he did a couple other things. He would show up to a job. He'd take the bus there, right? There's hustle. I'm not hating on that at all, but he'd show up to a job with an Aldi bag. If you know, if you have an Aldi, it's like a discount grocery store. And he would pull all his towels and his equipment out of this Aldi bag that he carried around. And that was how he got to jobs. Now, if somebody hired him, he was a great guy, super nice, but there was no value to that guy. It was, well, he better be the cheapest. Only thing you could focus on was price. So if you're in that spot, and you go, man, my people aren't going to pay more. Like, I'm maxed out. Like, ugh, I, I should probably lower my prices. Nope. That means you don't have value. If you can't convey your value, all they look at is price. I've said this a thousand times. It's my favorite saying. But if I was going to sell you something, and you had to pick one, I'm going to sell it to you for a dollar, a hundred dollars, or a thousand dollars, what would you pay? I'm not telling you what it is, but you have to buy one. All you know is price. That's what you're showing your customers. All you know, they go, well, the dollar, that's all I'm willing to pay is a dollar. It's all I know is the price. Huh? It's a dollar. Now, if I told you it was a brand new Lamborghini, 
Now, the value is your image of the Lamborghini. The value is the Lamborghini. Now you're not focused on price. Well, I'm going to buy five of them at $1,000 and sell them. Like, there's value there. I'm not even thinking about the dollar because the value is there. If you think you can't raise your price to where it needs to be, if you're not making like $75 plus dollars per man hour, raise your price. Increase your value to justify your price. And that's one of those things. Be clean, look good, increase your value, get people to want to use you. The next thing on the tips is always be better. Always advance yourself, always learn, always grow, always be better. There's a big thing when we started WC, well, when WCR started, there was an industry that existed that was no communication, there was no brotherhood, there was no uh, anything, it was people cleaning bird poop off windows, that was it. And the saying was, dinosaurs die. Dinosaurs die. It's morbid, I know, but listen, hear me out. The idea is that all the old timers that didn't care to ever learn anything new, they're still using wooden ladders and paper or uh, newspaper and vinegar and they just don't care, or they're still using that squeegee they bought in 1972, eventually those guys die out of business, right? So they close, sell, whatever. The next people coming in are not dinosaurs. They're learning the trade at that level. They're not stuck in their ways. So it's like, okay, so we can help those people. We can help everybody. But if you focus on the younger people, they will always be learning because they're still new. Now, if you get to the point where you're ever just like, I know it all. Well, it's time for you to move on. It's time for you to sell your business. You've learned it all. You've completed it. But I don't think that anybody ever will learn it all. There is absolutely 1,000% confidence that you could always be better. Now, what does that mean? Yes, I do a bunch of media. I do this podcast. Again, 300 plus episodes. If you want, I don't, I'm not saying that I know everything. Just we're talking shop. It's just something. Throw it in your ear. Maybe it helps you. Maybe you pick something out that you didn't hear. Maybe you read between the words what I'm saying. Maybe it helps you. Boom, you're bettering yourself. I know people who have watched or listened to every single episode. There's a bunch of you out there who have been on every single episode. That's amazing. How much knowledge do you know? Right? American Window Cleaner Magazine. We have just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of subscriptions that people have that they get the magazine every single month and they read it, they look at it, they, they, they love it, they learn something, they pick something out of it and they surround themselves with it. There's guys out there that are watching YouTube videos still on, on products. Anything new comes out, they get it, they wanna see, they wanna be better and they're doing and watching podcasts and, and audio books and everything. There are people out there who are always learning. If you're not the person who's always learning, those people are passing you up. They're smarter than you. I wanna be the smartest one in the room. Well, you shouldn't be the smartest one in the room, but I wanna be, right? I wanna have so much knowledge that I can then turn around and maybe help somebody else, right? So always be learning and don't get stuck in your ways. You get stuck in your ways, you turn into a dinosaur and dinosaurs die, right? The next one's upsell everyone. Up sell everyone now before you go ahead and think that i'm telling you to bait and switch or something weird like that upselling is this we're gonna be there uh we're gonna take care of everything the price on those windows is 329 that's for inside outside track sales and primes cool we show up and i go hey uh just so you know uh we'll be up there your gutters look a little bit uh dirty uh, we can actually add that onto your service for 199 bucks right now right Oh, just so you know, we offer pressure washing. I couldn't help but notice the patio, your concrete, uh, and that paver wall. I could all really use it. We won't be doing that today, but I'd love to get you set up. Right? Uh, your, your roof is looking a little bit dirty. Got some black streaks up there. Uh, we can clean that for you. No problem. It's going to make it look amazing. It's going to give you some more life out of that roof. Um, we won't be doing that today, but we can uh, schedule service so those guys come out in a little bit. Always be upselling. Always let somebody know the other services that you offer. Now, it doesn't mean that everybody's going to say yes, but 
it is always a strong attempt to be made. So if you have talks out there, pay them commission on those upsells. If you're the one talking or you have a office uh, staff, make sure that they're doing upsells. Always offer more. We're not baiting and switching. We're offering more services at a lower rate because we're already there or we're putting it in. Remember, once somebody likes you, they're more willing to use you. If you've already done service for them or you have one service, adding more services is super, super easy. Remember the number one thing that we had in this list already was get repeat work. Repeat work is just having every person increase their ticket. What if instead of your average ticket being $212 or whatever it is, by the way, if you're watching on YouTube, the comment that will confuse everybody is just tell me what your average ticket is. Just a dollar amount, dollar amount, right? Put it in YouTube as a comment and I want to read it. We'll know if somebody didn't watch the episode, they won't know. But if your average ticket is $212, what if you got every average ticket to $400? You did not increase the number of customers. You just increased the average ticket. The average ticket could be increased because of upsells. Upsells are easier. You can do the other services that you offer, right? Again, staying in your wheelhouse. More services you offer, the more you help them and the more willing they are to spend the money with you because they like you. They love you. They want to use you. Upsell everyone. It makes a ton of sense. And um, it's just, I don't even want to say easier, but it is a lot more convenient to increase your average ticket than always be looking for more people as customers. Remember, it costs a lot of money to get a customer. What's your cost of acquisition? Uh, uh, COA on a customer through Facebook could be $20, $30. What if there's Service Magic or Home Advisor? It's Home Advisor now. Angie, I think they merged again, right? What are you paying for a lead? That's a cost of acquisition. If I have somebody do an upsell, it didn't cost me anything, right? So think about upsells. Don't push them to the side. Another thing in one of my best top picks for you to grow your business is striking while the iron is hot. And this just means that you advertise when people are calling you. Again, the hard part is a lot of people now are like, man, spring should be here. I got to advertise. Is your phone ringing? Are you going crazy? Are you getting 50 calls a day? No, no, it hasn't even started really yet. Then don't advertise. You're not triggering people to think about a service and then buy. Advertising is putting you in their brain when they're already decided they're going to buy, right? They need to have it in their brain or be right on the cusp of it in order for it to work. Again, to give you an even uh, a suggestion to kind of verbalize or, or see this. But if I have a billboard with a picture of a cheeseburger, yes, I know you guys know this one. The best time to see that is around dinner time. It's not at six in the morning when I'm on, already late on my way to work. I got a coffee and I'm on, like, that doesn't do anything for me. Well, they're advertising 24 hours a day. That billboard should be selling cheeseburgers at six in the morning. It's not. It's not. What it is doing is it's there as soon as people start thinking about it. They're driving home. Maybe they got out a little bit more early. They're driving, they see that cheeseburger, like, man, I'm going to pick up a burger, man. I'm hungry. Next exit. That's when it works. It's already in their brain. It's the perfect time. It's even on the cusp. They didn't think they wanted a cheeseburger, but they know they're going to be thinking about dinner soon. That's where it works. Strike while the iron is hot. I'm telling you, don't advertise when you're slow. That's when people lose all of their money trying to do that. It just is fact. Uh, The next one's be seen. And this is all about your vehicles. Your vehicles should be permanently lettered. Now, I always get hate on this. I don't like magnets. Magnets to me show that you're a part-time business. And if you are a part-time business, I still don't want to see that you are. I want to see that your brain is in this. If you have permanent vinyl, if you have wraps, if you have all of that on your trucks, I can see that and go, these guys. Even if you have a day job, I can see that. It's always on. When you have a magnet, it's a temporary thing. Well, the guys, you know... He's just throwing it up there. Again, you're not showing me value. You're showing me price. At that point, I hope you're the cheapest, right? 
but your trucks have to be seen. You're driving in a billboard, a potential billboard. Yes, it costs money, but yes, the investment is absolutely amazing. It's probably the second best investment you can do with your money. The first best and the next thing on the list is be found with your SEO. You know, I talk about it all the time. You guys know Justin Monk. I love Justin Monk stuff, but his company takes SEO work off of your plate and ranks you higher. If you're not being found, oh, even if you don't use somebody for SEO, right? And you're trying to do it yourself, you need to get your website in front of people. It doesn't work to have a website that no one finds. Well, you know, I'm not on the first page of Google. Then you don't exist. If you're not on the first page of Google, if you're not on the local places, right? If you're not on anything and you're not being seen, then you're completely, completely gone. You don't exist. You have to be found. The number one thing you can possibly do, maybe you're not ready in business, but just as something, is paying for SEO, getting somebody professionally to do SEO work. It's a 24 hour thing and it continues to get you up there. If you're number one on Google, when somebody searches window cleaning in XYZ city, you will get every single call first. That's just a fact, right? Reviews get you on the local page to rank up. SEO gets your website to rank up, right? It's just absolutely amazing how many people don't do that and they just hope that they're getting better and better. They just like hope that somehow it gets, that's not, SEO is 100% active. So go and do that. If you got some money to spend, do it on SEO. And the last thing on the 11 tips for window cleaners is get help. Okay, hold on. I don't want you to think that I'm talking about mental help, which it is actually mental help. But uh, like I said, uh, um, I, I do uh, some private stuff. And the number one thing that benefits people from a program, any program, or any person you have in your life that's a business coach or uh, a life coach or any of that stuff, is just to be able to talk about everything. It's just to be able to talk about everything. If you're talking about window cleaning, you're talking to a window cleaner, then questions can be asked. We can talk about things and put it all out there. It's amazing. If you're talking to a life coach, they are able to listen to you, listen to the issues, and give you suggestions on how to just bring down your levels of anxiety or peace or just anything in life. But here's a big problem. Most businesses don't have someone. They don't have someone to talk to. Your spouse doesn't want to hear it. Right? You talk to them and they're like, oh, okay. They don't get it. Right? Your competition, maybe, maybe you're close, but there's like certain things you're not telling them. When you go to one of these uh, live events and these conferences and shows, do you know why you get so much out of it? It's because you found somebody who's on the same wavelength as you. When you say something, they listen, they in, they're interested, they understand. We don't have that in our life. If you go on pro window cleaning, and you say, hey guys, I'm having a, pr everybody's going to throw out answers and tell you how stupid you are. Then you're not going to ask questions anymore. If you don't have it in your life, find someone that you can talk. Life coach, therapist, uh, business coach. Find someone that can help. Now, the reason is, and I did this. This is where burnout comes from. If you don't have that that venting point, right? If you don't have uh, 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 someone else to, and I can only speak for myself, but if you don't have somebody for uh, bouncing an idea off, or hey, I'm thinking about this, all you're doing is seeing it like this. Every idea you come up with is perfect because you came up with it. You don't have any checks and balances in business. You don't have anybody else to bounce ideas off of. You don't have anybody else to do any of that stuff. That is absolutely where burnout comes from. You just keep putting it on your shoulders and putting it on your shoulders and putting it on your shoulders and eventually you go, man, I hate this company. I hate this business. I hate the industry. Ugh, it's terrible. Well, it's because you have nothing. You're just carrying all the stuff. You're trying to slush around with all the stuff in your shoulders. So find someone that will help you 
to take that burden off. And it's amazing what happens when you have that accountability and you have somebody to help you push yourself. You'll always be excited about business. The changes and things that happen in business will be absolutely amazing. So find someone, find help, get somebody who wants to listen. And that's it. I'm off my high horse for this week. But listen, if you're still watching or listening, please do let me put your orders in. I shameless plug all the time, but that's literally how I make my money. It's the only way I make my money is by putting orders in for people. I want to help with questions. I want to help with bidding. I want to help with, hey, look at my website. I'm going to give you honest answers if you ask about equipment, and I'm going to give you honest answers if you ask about pricing or jobs or something you're doing. It doesn't have to be just private coaching. It can be just a simple phone call or text. Hey, man, I got a quick question. Let me know. My number is 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. Let me be your rep. I would be absolutely honored to do so. Uh, no orders too small, too big, whatever. We free ship over 49. Um, so for your benefit, hopefully it's over 49. But also, we're nerds about window cleaning. You're either working or watching, listening about a window cleaning podcast, which most people don't even exist. Yeah, we have a million downloads, but that doesn't mean that there's not 300 million people who think that's super weird. We're nerds. We want to be smart. We want to be better. We want to always be learning. That's where American Window Cleaner Magazine comes in. Please do get that subscription. I see when orders come in for subscriptions, and I want to have the best magazine that you guys can possibly get. So please go to awcmag.com. Get yourself a subscription. It's like 69 bucks. Every month comes to your door, and it comes with stickers. So you can do that. Uh, but more importantly, use some of the tips, or at least listen to the tips. But more importantly, until next week, Go out there and be epic.